Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our program of work presentation. Uh, the 2012-13 Phi Beta Lambda National Officers Team has worked very hard to put together a program of work for you this year that will help us ignite innovation together. And we're very happy that you're letting us take the time to present it to you. Uh, a brief introduction. My name is Donnie Aorio, and I have the honor of serving as the 2012-13 Phi Beta Lambda National President. I've been involved with this wonderful organization since I was a freshman in high school. And through local, state, and former national offices, I'm, I'm honored to be here. And I'd like to take this time to also introduce my team, starting with the uh, three other national officers, Chu and Zhu from Florida, Brett Harris from Arkansas, and Amber Kutnick from Nebraska. And then also with our five regional VPs, starting with Peter Ron representing Mountain Plains, Brian Polson representing the Western Region, Stephanie Boardman representing the North Central Region, I'm Ruth Ashridar representing the Eastern Region, and finally Jessica Berger representing the Southern Region. So when we created our program of work, one thing that we based all of our goals and initiatives off of was the mission statement because it is what our organization is, everything that we do holds true to the mission. And that mission statement is to bring educate, business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Everything we did on our program of work related directly back to our mission statement. And so taking our mission statement, we sat down as a team and said, what are our main priorities? What do we want to do? So as a team, we created three main priorities that every one of our goals and initiatives had to encompass. The first priority was accountability. We didn't want to do something and put it on our program of work without holding ourselves accountable. Therefore, you'll see, as we discuss our initiatives today, every program has a system of accountability for the national officer team. Not only deadlines, but also constant communication and logging to make sure that we can produce analytical and quantitative results. Communication. If this initiative did not promote communication within the team, um, as far as internal communication and also the promotion to our members um, in external communication, it wasn't worth doing. So we thought very carefully with every, um, every aspect of our program of work to ensure that we could keep communication in the loop. And then also, the most important priority we had, um, bar none, was membership. How is this goal, this initiative, going to help us retain members, reactivate members, or start new chapters? And also, how is it going to increase the value of our membership? So from there, we went to the organization's strategic plan, which encompasses four goals. And those goals are customer service, image and awareness, relationships, and resources. For ease, we actually broke down all of our goals and initiatives into one of these four goals. And the first one we're going to talk about today is customer service. Uh, customer service also includes our membership numbers. And let's go through last year, 2011-12, we had 502 active chapters, and that's 11,134 paid members. We looked at these numbers and said, you know what, last year was one of our, our best years ever in recent history. Um, Jake's team did an excellent job um, meeting all their goals, and this year we're going to exceed those goals. So our anticipated goals for this year is 527 active chapters and 11,524 paid members by the end of the year. Now I'm going to pull up this graph here just to kind of illustrate our membership numbers over the past five years. Um, just to clarify, the blue line is representing the amount of chapters we've had with the scale on the left, and the bars are representing our membership numbers with the scale on the right. As you can see, over the past two years, we've increased chapter membership. We've increased the number of chapters in our organization. Um, therefore, we really feel that 527 is an obtainable goal that we will be able to reach. Now, as far as membership goes, we did have a drop-off last year. Or, I'm sorry, two years ago. But during Jake Beru's um, administration, we had the ability and we did raise membership, and we, we anticipate to keep that, trend, keep that trend going. So a percentage of change from the previous year, that 527 active chapters is a 5% anticipated growth from last year's numbers of 502. And that 11,524 um, members is a 3.5% growth on last year's final membership number. Now, when we're talking about retention and how that plays into retention, that is, we want to keep 440 chapters from last year, and that's an 87.5 retention rate, <coughs> percentage retention rate, when it comes to react or reactivating our chapters. 
because we've seen that teams in the past have done an excellent job with recruitment of new chapters, but when we lose more chapters than we gain, we have that net loss, and that's a problem <clears throat> that's inexcusable for our team. Um, customer service also encompasses other parts of our program of work, and therefore I'd like to invite Amrutha to talk a little bit about the external communication initiatives that we have this year. Amrutha. Thanks, Donnie. So a couple things that we wanted to target with external communication. First is social media. Now, of course, we all know that with social media, people find out things way before any formal forms can be put up or anything. It's the quickest way people get bored of anything. So we're going to use that to our advantage. And with social media, we're going to target, of course, Twitter, Facebook. And one of the new things we want to really focus in on is LinkedIn. We do have a LinkedIn page. Um, and as you can see here, there are, pop there are discussions. There's a discussion board. And uh, recently, actually, Shuin and Brett have been updating people on that and answering questions and being really active on that. And they volunteer to continue to do so throughout the year. Um, with Twitter, of course, we each have our national Twitter accounts, and we're going to be tweeting regularly. And of course, with Facebook, there's our national page, which all of us will be held you know, accountable and responsible for answering any questions, updating our memos on anything and everything we possibly can. And that's something that we all have a good understanding that we should be doing. And apart from that, the regional VPs, we all have our Facebook uh, regional groups, and then we have our officer page. Seems a little redundant to post on both, saying that, you know, oh, okay, we've got to post on the group, and then we're going to essentially end up posting the same thing on our officer page. So what we uh, come up with is we thought that it would be better to just retire the group and focus in on the page, maybe drop the, the VP title on it and just keep it as, for example, Eastern Region page. Maybe you have the uh, VP's picture on it just so people can be like, oh, okay, that's my VP. And just post on there to keep one stream of communication between the members of the region and the officer. Um, and something that we've adopted from FBLA is the officer hotline for PBL. So I know it's crazy, but here's the number. <laughs> so call us maybe. <laughs> Our number is 805-2-GO-PBL-1. Really easy to remember. And we're hoping that, oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm so sorry. Oh, National Officer Hotline. This is Arisa, your Eastern Region Vice President. How may I help you? Long time from the University of Maryland. I'm interested in uh, starting a PBL. Oh, oh, wow, Marilyn. I've been waiting to hear from you. I'm so excited that you want to start a new chapter. And any, any further questions you have, I'll be more than happy to answer. Essentially, how it's going to work. So the number does work, we promise. Uh, you're going to get one of the officers. If not the officer that you're looking for, so someone's going to be able to answer your question immediately. If none of the officers can pick up the phone, then it's going to go straight to voicemail, and you just leave your information, your state, and what it actually does is it translates it into a text message that all of us immediately get as soon as we leave the message. So we're all going to get it on our phone and say, oh, okay, if we see someone from New Jersey calling, I, as Eastern Region Vice President, would know, oh, okay, I'll answer this call because this is New Jersey, and that's one of the states that I'm responsible for. So that's one way that we know we can all, uh, and also there's a log for who's been calling, so that's another way we can all um, keep track of what we're doing and be held accountable. The next thing, email blasts. It, Jake's email blasts were a big hit. I know we all enjoyed reading them and being updated via these blasts. So we're going to keep it and we're going to expand on it. What we've all agreed upon is that each of us having our own email blast to send. Uh, of course, Donnie's, so presidents and vice presidents would probably be the most frequent is what we're thinking. Donnie's would be every month on the first. And what we figured is so that we don't overwhelm our members by sending them two, three email blasts at once, we'll give them two weeks. Is this a real? Yeah. Is this Go. <laughs> National PBO hotline. I don't know who's calling. We're being broadcast live to members, so there's a very good chance that the members are actually calling in. Good job, so. members. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody answered though. <laughs> if you have a question, call back. Maybe a little later after the presentation. <laughs> so then we'll act 
actually be able to answer your question. What was I talking about? Email blast. So the vice presidents will be sending this maybe on the 15th is what we figured. So at least every month, um, members will be getting uh, an update from us. And with the other officers, they can send their email blast whenever they feel it's most appropriate that, okay, I've done three, four things. It's time to let our members know in one blast saying that we've done all this stuff just in case you haven't seen it on our Facebooks and Twitters and LinkedIn, here's an email from us. Um, nice thing, information request form, that's something you can find on the national site. Um, any non-members can go on there, request information, and sitting. <laughs> uh, request information from us, and one of us will be able to respond accordingly. And finally, we have the method analysis. This is something Donnie will be taking care of. Um, you'll have a report of essentially the traffic, the inflow that comes through all these sites. So we have um, quantitative analytical research, the, the numbers. So it's all numbers to say, okay, we have a good flow on this page. Now, this page needs some work. Or this is good, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Or, you know, maybe you want to post more of this, post more of that. What, like, what's popular, what's not? So we can even improve the, our method of communication or, you know, put something up there that the members want to see. Because maybe they're not coming to our pages enough. So we want to fix that. And there's always room for improvement. For, for, nothing. Perfect. And with that, I'll turn it to Seth. Seth. <laughs> with customer service, we have created the goal to be accountable of ourselves. To do this, we are implementing two new social media tools, Yammer and Trello. Now, Yammer can be very easily compared to Facebook, in that, but it allows us to interact and update the whole association together. With this, we will be able to update exactly what we are doing as a national officer team so that the whole board and anyone in this association can see what we are doing together. Like I said, it's very easy to compare to Facebook in that you create a post. But with that specific post, you are also able to add a specific tag, such as POW or membership. The other great resource that Yammer allows us to use is private messaging, such as you can see here. With this type of message that Brian sent, you are able to tag specific people that you want to see that message. And in this one, it is Mr. White and Miss Mothers. Like I said, Trello is going to be the second source we are going to use. Trello is a project management tool that allows us to create boards. As you can see, one board that we are currently working on is the membership board. Now, in this, we are able to also create tabs in this specific board, such as new, to do, doing, and done, which allows us to update one another on what we are doing as a team. With this, in each tab, we are also able to update the activity log constantly, assign certain members to those certain tasks, and upload resources for one another. <coughs> like I said before, with each column, we are able to update the status based on where we are in that activity. So say from we have the the Rye University and the new, when that when a certain officer that is assigned to that card is actively updating it, it can be easily transferred to do. So it's very easy to update, transfer and keep everyone accountable of ourselves. Like I said before, with assigning certain members to those certain, tar certain cards, we are able to filter those tasks so we can see exactly what, say, the Southern Region Vice President is doing with membership or what the North Central Region Vice President do is doing on membership and maybe help each other out based on those certain tasks. So that's what we were doing for accountability, and like Donnie said, it is very important to us to increase that. And with that, I would like to introduce Ms. Amber Kupnik. Hello. So um, to help with chapter recruitment, we have created this bylaws assistance program, which new chapters, the new members, are able to um, receive support in creating their chapter bylaws. And as well, established chapters can um, submit 
their bylaws for review by submitting on a form that will be created on the national website. And we will use social media as a means to promote this. And we will also use the contacts that you have saw in um, Trello to contact the new members and helping them create their chapter bylaws. And then we will also um, have a new Trello board that will be focused solely on this bylaws assistance. So we will able to quantify how many chapters we will able to reach through this program. Thank you, Amber. So that's customer service. And I think that you, we've been able to prove that, first off, accountability is abundant in customer service. Not only was it one of our overall arching goals, but also with our new initiatives, such as the officer hotline. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but four or five people's phones started ringing on them at the same time. And then also, so we proved that it works, but then also there's the, there's the back end and analytical side for us to see how often we're getting calls, who's answering calls, if calls are being responded to. And we're also logging all communication that we're having with these members and chapters. So that way we do have the quantified analytical results. The next thing I'd like to move on to is image and awareness. And with that, I'm going to ask Brian to talk a little bit about our image and awareness goals for the upcoming year. Brian? So the first thing that we want to talk about is external communication. Now you may have noticed that this was actually a goal from customer service. It was our first goal in which we were doing a lot with social media, the email blasts, and things like that. Now when using these resources, it's very, very important to keep in aware our image and awareness, especially being the professional organization that we are with at BLA PBL. Um, so some of the things that we're focusing on. With the email blast, we are going to create an email, an HTML-based te template that everybody can use to send their email out each month. So that way there's unity in those and for the members, as well as social media sites. Uh, all of us on all our officer pages, we have the same cover image and it's the logo for this year with Igniting Innovation. And with our Twitter pages, we have also gone and branded them all using the same theme and right now we currently have the, the NFLC information up so that anybody that visits our Twitter page, our Twitter feeds, can have that information and stay in touch that way. So I'd like to turn the time over to Peter at this time to talk about governmental awareness. Thank you, Brian. In addition to focusing on our external communication and brand management, the National Officer Team also felt it was important to consider governmental awareness and advocacy as a part of our program of work. How this simply translates is that the National Officer Team is working on compiling a bank of pre-written letters that members on the state and local levels can use to write to their legislative representatives, either on the national level or on the state level as well. As PBL is a nonprofit organization, a large part of the funding on the state and local level comes from federal programs or state programs. If members are able to voice their written opinions to their state representatives, they are more likely to be able to correctly translate the, the effect that FBLA PBL is having in their schools and communities as well. And so that's what that bank of letters will help us to accomplish, is to ensure that we're able to reach those, that audience more effectively. Additionally, we're going to focus on developing our relationship with the Department of Education. Donnie has done a great job of forging relationships with the outreach coordinators at the National Department of Education, and we'll be following up with them on a monthly basis to ensure that we're able to correctly get our needs um, communicated with them and they can communicate their needs back to us as well. And with that, Donnie, I guess I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Peter. So image and awareness, I think what's so great about that is that we really tie it to customer service. We found that there is a, a redundancy there, and that's not a bad thing. Um, so instead of reinventing the wheel, we decided that we were really going to focus those two together. And then also working with our government outreach programs, it's something that's really going to um, promote and advocate our organization um, on the local and state levels, as we have done this past week when we visited uh, Capitol Hill in D.C. The next thing I'd like to talk about is inviting uh, Jessica up to talk about the relationships in our organization. And we're going to be talking not only about our external relationships, but also our internal relationships between divisions. So with that, Jessica. As you know, the March of Dimes is something that we're passionate about. This year, we will raise $525,000 for this cause. This is a 5% in increase from last year, and we will do this, we will do this by utilizing the teen youth programs that are already in place. This is the first time that a national officer team will work directly with team youth on a constant and continual basis. I'll turn it over to our national secretary, Xu Enzu. 
Thank you, Jessica. Like Donnie was saying, relationships is not just about external relationships. It's also about what's said on organization. As the name says, we're FBI-PBL, and that means we're not just five bail lambda alone. We do have four divisions under this huge umbrella. We have the middle level, we have FBLA, we have PBL, and most importantly, we also have the professional division. And that streamlined membership right there helps to encourage a lifelong involvement within our organization. And we do want to make sure our members are staying with us for as long as possible. And to do so, we want to make sure that there is a mentorship program between PBL and FBLA, as well as between um, professional division and PBL. It's about getting our members to use what they learn in classroom, apply to our organization. What they learn in our organization applies to real life. After all, we are a pure technical focused organization and want to make sure our members do get internships and the jobs they deserve once they get to the real world. And to help along with that, we want to make sure as a team we're leading by example. And therefore, we'll be working with the FBLA national team as well as the professional division member, or national officer team using the relationship we have already established and continue to develop that. And again, to help with the transition from high school to college, it is a hard transition. We all know that. We've been through it together. And to help with that, we're, going through, we're actually going to present a workshop at NFLC in addition to our CMAP workshop. And it's going to be a transitional workshop. This is not just about how to transition from FBLA to PBL. It's also about how to transition from high school to college, how to make that transition a bit more smoother, how to adjust to a new environment, how to make friends, how to get involved. It's a wholesome um, mentorship workshop that we believe is really going to help with the retention that we want to achieve. And last, we do, we're going to actually launch a new program called September Suite. As you all may, may, may be aware already, it's actually a program that last year's FBLA national team wanted to get started. And we're actually going to continue that one on. To do so, we're going to encourage chapters to participate in this program. It's very similar to March Madness. However, instead of doing a membership drive at the end of our membership year, we're going to do it in the beginning of our membership year. And that really is going to help with the push um, for membership. And to encourage our chapter participation, we're actually going to offer a VIP program at each of the NFLCs. When chapter completes our September suite, they'll be invited to exclusive VIP program at NFLC with the PBL National Officer Team, the FBLA National Officer Team, as well as the Professional Division Officer Team. Again, you can see there we have that um, assistance and co um, cooperation between each of the three national teams. And at the program, we're going to have professional division review resumes, doing networking, as well as helping um, with the maybe mock interviews, and again, showing our we are a career and technical institution. And, help, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to Donnie to wrap this up with our relationships. Thank you. And I think what's really great about the relationships is we're not only focusing on our external ones, be it the March of Dimes. Uh, and we've been their largest national service partner on the youth level for the past 70 years. But we're also focusing on our internal relationships and really pushing that FBLA PBL is a lifetime organization from the time you enter at the middle level all the way through the, through the real, real world um, by joining the professional division. And I've already been working with the other division presidents, Nikitas and Brad Howard um, from FBLA and professional division to ensure that we can ensure that transition and be able to ultimately increase our membership and the value of our membership. Um, and that's our relationships. Now, our last goal um, in our strategic plan is resources. And to do that, there's no better person to talk about it than Brett Harris, who is our national treasurer. And he'll be the one dealing with um, a majority of our resources throughout the year. So Brett, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Our team realizes the importance of our membership. We know that our membership is one of our greatest resources available to us. With this in mind, we will be establishing action councils. First of all, we will establish a new council this year called the Membership Action Council. This council will be composed of dedicated members who will serve as liaisons between us and prospective chapters, helping to establish the initial relationship with these universities. Next, we will be revamping the Regional Action Council system. In essence, we will be condensing or downsizing the size of the councils to increase productivity. It will be easier for our regional vice president to manage their team while at the same time improving a more hands-on approach with their region. Last, we will be establishing a Treasurer's Action Council. 
This council will be composed of members from each region. In addition, we will be creating a record keeper position because records are very, very important and help establish accountability. We will have a database where every company that is contacted, we will have something similar to Trello where we have activity logs established and everything like that so that any national staff member or national team member will be able to go back and see what has been done with this company. And it also establishes a system where it is easier for the team members to follow up with these companies. Thanks, Brett. Now, what's great about the resources is we really do stress our three priorities. Accountability is going to be present as we log everything that we do through a database system. Communication is important because we're actually downsizing the size of the, as Brett said, downsizing the size of those regional um, action councils to make them more effective so we can actually contact more. In this case, we believe less is going to be more. And then also, we really believe that we're going to be not only increasing our membership numbers through the membership action council and helping us generate the leads and initial contact with these schools, but we're really going to be increasing the value of membership by having our members be more engaged and involved. Uh, we'd like to thank you very much for allowing us to present to you our program of work. I'm very proud of my team that we were able to put this together, and I really, I'd encourage you to look out this year because it's going to be a good one. Uh, we'd invite any questions and answers. We know that we have uh, staff members in the room, but we will also be taking questions via the comments section um, on any of the social media that you've seen this, uh, this announcement posted, and those will be moderated through uh, one of our staff members as well. So at this time, we'd like to welcome any questions. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I know Robert was nodding over here when you were talking about the workshops. <laughs> I, no, I think that's a great thing. First, kudos again to your team, Donnie. Um, all good things, increasing your membership, increasing your chapters. Um, I'm off with Mark to die because I have the team captain for our national team here. So. That's great news for that because we're all about raising money for babies. Um, and then the traditional workshop that the NFL sees, that's just great. And then working with the other officer teams to help those FBLA and middle level people transition. Okay, great. I think it's a great thing coming up. I'm looking forward to working with you and igniting innovation. Absolutely. <laughs> we can ignite innovation and save babies together. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like your mentorship idea and how you're um, working with all the other divisions and I, I think that when you're looking at anything where you're doing preparing for career prep and the mock interviews and the critiques, I think that, that that's really important and that's a great thing. So good job on that part. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that not only benefits the, um, for example, professional division members are you know, helping the Phi Beta Lambda members uh, with our resumes and job interview prep, that's not only benefiting are Phi Beta Lambda members, it's also benefiting the professional division members because, I mean, they really see a passion in this organization for them to be able to join um, and formalize their relationship with us. And we really believe that it's something that's going to help us across all the divisions. Well, and, and moving it to the fall, I think, is a good move because sometimes when you come to the summer, it's almost too late as they're looking for jobs. So that, that's really a smart way to do it. Thank you. I think that's also applicable with like FBLA yes. for like the juniors and seniors out there just getting that you know uh, update of co about college and college right. applications. Exactly. And right. as college students, we'd be able to say you know you know, don't mention this or mention this and word it this way um, to help them. Just like we would uh, college students would be getting the help from professional division about the real world. FBLA students, high school students would be getting advice from the collegiate division about college. Most definitely, and that's actually a program we have in Florida currently. Um, we go at the in, uh, FLC as well as the FBLA State. We have a transitional workshop and we provide a mentorship. And it's been so great. We've heard so much great feedback from our FBLA members as well as FBLA advisors. Yes, ma'am. So um, I have a question regarding uh, the PBL Facebook page currently. Mm -hmm. um, well, the group page for PBL is private group and um, it's very active, very popular and so I'm wondering if that relates because it is private that maybe some people feel a little bit of exclusivity but it does, you know, kind of close the door to FBLA kids. Are you thinking of 
keeping it as is or make, making it an open group? Yes. Um, something that we feel is very, very important is transparency this year. Um, because I, I'm a very big advocate for transparency on the web and showing everything that you're doing. This year, like today, we're broadcasting this presentation live to our membership and we'll be posting it afterwards so that it can be watched by anybody who wasn't able to see it. We're posting all our notes, all of our plans, and helping the members keep us accountable. But likewise, it's very important, I think, to have that transparency so that we get the involvement from the entire membership. So that would be, I think, a great thing to see. Absolutely. And I think something that's, uh, that's worth noting, too, is, it, like you said, our 5A Lambda Facebook group is incredibly act active. We have lots and lots of wonderful members that post daily. And they, um, what's so great is someone will post a question there. And before a national officer even has the chance to respond to a question, another member has already answered the question. We're really, um, it, it's great to see a community working like that. And I think that's something that past teams have done a really good job is fostering that community. And it's definitely something worth looking into. I'm not sure of the logistics of removing the security um, and making that a, a public group. But that certainly coincides with the transparency that our team is pushing uh, forth so much. I mean, even our monthly reports are going to be published every month. So I think that's something that would promote transparency between all divisions as well. Thank you for your question. Do we have any questions from members? No? Yeah. Shout out to whoever did that. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Uh -huh. um, well then, if there's no other questions or comments, we really do thank um, all of you in the room today and also everyone watching us online and that will be watching this uh, as it will be recorded and posted on our national YouTube channel um, for allowing us to talk